What's up, brothers and sisters in Christ? I hope you guys are having a blessed day today. May the joy of the Lord be our strength. I'm Colton from Seeking Wisdom Ministries, and um, I just want to thank God today. And yesterday, uh, I entered into the second greatest covenant that we can have with God, and that is marriage. And I have a beautiful bride who has a beautiful hunger and heart for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, as we are equally yoked to serve our Creator, our Master, Jesus Christ, alongside of each other. Because man, um, you know, is not good alone, but, you know, he, God will make a help meet for him. But also, if God is not wanting you to be married, you should just pray about it, ask God, as we are living in the last of days. Um, but I had an amazing time with family yesterday and got to truly just have an amazing, peaceful event in time with everybody who came out. But as I was spending time with her today, and we're just praying, we're, we're, we were reading the word today in 2 Thessalonians 2. Uh, there are some things that me and her were talking about as we see our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, approaching. Because we are in the last days. We are in the last seconds before Jesus Christ returns. Do I know exactly when? No, I don't. But I do know that there is an urgency that God, our Father who art in heaven, set in my heart and many other brothers and sisters who I meet up with. And we have, you know, studies, we have prayer meetings, whatever the case is, there's an outpouring of, of the Holy Spirit in these days of an urgency to be set apart holy, to walk in the ways of the Lord. There's an exposing that is taking place also in people and men and women of God who are supposedly uh, ministers of light, yet they're not because we know that Lucifer, Satan, is comes as an angel of light, yet he is a minister of darkness. Um, with hidden agendas, people who have false prophecies, false prophets, false teachers, uh, people who are antichrist, yet they themselves are deceived and being deceived. In the last of days, people will heap up t teachers having itching ears, okay, who are deceived, and them themselves being deceived. There actually was a uh, a church who I used to go to who is being exposed for that very thing. And, you know, when I used to go to this church, I used to sit there in the pulpit when I started becoming hungry for God and reading his word for myself instead of taking a pastor's truth for what the word of God says. I took the word of God for what it actually says, and I just read it, believed it, and obeyed it. And that's when God started showing himself real to me. And I would sit there, and I'd look at him, I'd look at the word of God, and I'd be like, this doesn't line up. And then God supernaturally took me to Galatians 5 and said, who hindered you that you should not obey the truth? This persuasion does not come from God or come from him who calleth you. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. For God, I'm persuaded that you shall have no other mind, but he who troubleth you shall bear his judgment. So when I read that and I was watching this pastor who was making me feel so comfortable in my sin and, and that I'm saved no matter what I do, no matter if I'm fornicating, drunken, or, or this or that, the other, you know, homosexuals or whatever the case is, and I'm feeling like, wow, okay, I can live free, you know, free to sin, free to live a life willful in disobedience to our creator. And then I go to Galatians and the Lord showed me that. Who hindered you? from obeying the truth. This persuasion does not come from him who calls you. That is in Galatians 5. Now, as I was talking with my bride today, my wife now, praise the Lord, um, we were looking at 1 Thessalonians 2, and the Lord really pr placed on my, uh, on our spirit as we we're in you know, one flesh now, that I should talk about this. There are false teachers and false preachers in these last days who have hidden agendas, who have, you know, are in it or for the crowd approval, for money, for... Uh, just to itch people's ears, fear of man. It could be a multitude of things. It doesn't have to only be just this or just that. It can be something that, you know, fear of man mainly, but there are also deception that are very, very subtle, that it only takes a keen eye who knows righteous and, and unrighteous, who have been in the word a long time, who knows our God personally, who can tell the difference. Like the wheat and the tares, right? God is separating and doing a separating of the wheat and the tares in these days, but we need to be aware we need to be aware that we do not fight against flesh and blood that our fight is in the spirit and that we need to be on our knees praying in the spirit praying in the holy spirit that we can be ready putting on the full armor of god daily but i was looking at this with my wife and i'm like wow this is so powerful this is so good so i just wanted to share it encourage you guys who are waiting for our blessed hope waiting for our lord and savior's return so let's get into it. This is Second Thessalonians two, or sorry, First Second Thessalonians two, starting three and five, verse three and five. Paul is talking, and he says, "God tested us thoroughly, 
to make sure we were qualified to be trusted with this message, which, with the, which the gospel is the message, the good news, the gospel. And I just want to stop right there. So God is testing. Don't be uh, worried or, or, you know, down because you're being tested. If you're wanting and you're called to go preach or you're called to go share the gospel and you're going through fiery trials, don't worry because God is testing you. God is testing to see if you're qualified with the most important message there ever is and ever will be. That is the message of salvation through Jesus Christ. Now, be assured this is continuing. Be assured that we, when we speak to you, we're not after crowd approval, only God approval. Since we've put, been put through the battery of tests, you're guaranteed that both we and the message are free of error, mixed motives, or hidden agendas. We never use words to butter you up. This is the message translation that I don't approve to go after and read and do your whole studying for. I do everything in King James Version, but this is very similar to what the King James Version, just in nowadays words that we can look at, um, but I'm going to put it in the description in King James Version down below. But I just like the interesting word. We never use words to butter you up. How many people in these last days are after approval of man? Okay, they want to butter you up. They want to feed you marshmallows, the gummy bear gospel, and preach something that you can feel comfortable in your sin, rather than Holy Spirit convicting you and using a man or, of God or a woman of God to, to, to say the truth in spirit and truth that is convicting, convincing, encouraging, as well as loving. And that's a balance. It's, it's a hard to juggle the word of God in the way that Lord, the Lord Jesus wants to show because we have so many people so off balance, it's insane. But many people these last two days want to butter you up with the word of God. God never called people to butter you up, to make you feel good. Jesus Christ, his words were contemptible. Okay, they were harsh. People walked away. It says when God said, if you do, eat, if you do not eat of my flesh and drink of my blood, you have no life in you. When he said that, it says right below that many disciples after they turned away and followed him no longer because they were harsh words. So Jesus Christ himself, God in the flesh, didn't say things to butter you up, flatter you, make you feel good. He said the truth and the truth will make you free. Not butter, not, not gummy bear gospel. Let's continue. No one knows that better than you and God knows we never used words as a smokescreen to take advantage of you. We have a lot of people taking advantage of each other in these last two days. A lot of people using flattering words. Okay, let's look in the King James Version real quick for those who use that. I do as the English translation and I go in the Greek or Hebrew if I really want to study a word definition. But let us not be lazy. If you don't, if you have a hard time understanding King James Version, do New King James Version. And if you still do, look up the definition because God's wanting to show you little deeper things hidden. For our exhortation was not of deceit nor un uncleanness nor in guile, but we were allowed of God to be tr and put in trust with the gospel, even so we speak, not as pleasing men, but God, which trieth our hearts. For we neither at any time use flattering words, as you know, nor cloak of covetousness, God is witness. Nor men sought we glory, neither of you nor yet of others. We might have been burdensome as of the apostles, but we were gentle among you, even as the nurse cherith her children. So it's a, fa a false balance is an abomination to the Lord. We know that says it in Proverbs. So let us be awakened that there is a lot of false teachers in the last of days as the Lord had warned us that there would be many, okay, antichrist who profess to be Christians, who profess to love Jesus, but they themselves are wolves in sheep's clothing. And it's very subtle. I mean, wolves in sheep's clothing aren't just going to tell you, hey, I'm a ravenous wolf and I'm here to destroy you. They themselves probably don't even know why, because they're being deceived and deceiving others too. They don't know, wake up every morning, how many people I can deceive. There are those people who do, but I would say a far majority aren't. But as we can see, that we should be not worried when God puts us through the test. And this is what my wife wrote down, which I thought was pretty good as a side caption to what 1 Thessalonians 2 three through five says, and she goes, don't you have to take a test for a job in this world to see if you're qualified for the job? How much more important is it to be tested by God who brings us through the fire to see if you're qualified to bring the most important message to the people, which is the living word of God. Now that's powerful guys. I, 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 that is really powerful. I mean, come on. We think that, you know, God's going to just entrust us with the most valuable, precious thing on the entire planet, on the entire universe. And we aren't going to go through testings and trials. And when things bad that happen to us, we're blaming it on God. But when things are going well, we don't even thank God. 
Like, come on, this is the will of God, that we be thankful in all things. Anything extra that we get, I mean, at all, we should just be blessed and say, thank you, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Pray to him. Holy Spirit is a personality. He, God himself, is a personality. He created people who he can fellowship with through in which he wants to dwell in us to do so. Isn't that powerful? Like, we have a God who loves us so deeply that he wants to live inside of our temple. We are the temple in which the Holy Spirit dwells. But if we defile the temple of God, that man God will destroy. So let us have a good balance of love, of trust, of union with God, and fo following Jesus Christ and his commands and obeying them. Not just hearing the word of God, because what saves you? Hearing the word of God? No. Hearing the word of God, moving on the word of God, obeying the word of God. Now, obedience is the fruit, okay, of faith. Faith moves. When Noah wanted to build the ark because God warned him, hey, I'm going to destroy this wicked world with water. What do you think? Noah just sat back. Oh, I have faith in you, God. Yeah, I know you're going to do it. But did that save him? Did just mental understanding and faith in Jesus Christ in the head or faith that God would do that in the head save him? No. Obedience saved him because of faith. It all starts with faith. You don't trust obedience in that you're going to be saved. You trust in God through faith that you're going to do stuff because you believe in him. It's the fruit. It's the evidence that, wow, I'm saved. Thank you, Jesus Christ. But that's all that I have to share. That's all the Lord wanted me to speak upon. I hope that encouraged you. Open up some of your eyes to the reality of the gospel and the love of Christ and what it really means that he shed his precious blood that we might be sanctified, saved, set free, and delivered from this world. God bless you all in Jesus' name.